At a dinner party recently, I encountered the depressingly familiar sight of a dynamic 30, something woman accompanied by a nerdy male sidekick that she'd browbeaten into proposing to her. The mismatch in power was obvious. She was successful, ambitious and confident. He was a diffident, overweight, shrinking violet who measured every word he spoke in case he said anything remotely contentious that might offend her. On her wedding finger was the most enormous, glittering engagement ring. A mutual friend later told me she'd initially been presented with a less garish but more exquisite diamond, but had told her fiancé to return it to the shop and get her something bigger. That huge diamond was his declaration of surrender in the intimacy war, but I didn't feel sorry for the stupid sap. He should have been man enough to tell her to get lost and find some other dummy. Instead, he'd been sucker punched into a lifetime of nagging and neglect, and looking at his bossy wife-to-be parading her huge rock. I felt a shiver of preemptive shade and fruit. Her smug smile might have given the impression that her glossy magazine-inspired life was all going to plan, but I could see the tragedy to come. One day she'll realize how dull and unfulfilling it is to have a man who doesn't answer back, who offers no challenge or danger, but by then she'll be over the hill and stuck with him for fear of being left on the shelf. Sadly, this is the state of many marriages today. Back in the 90s, emboldened by the successes of feminism, women sought to slay the dragon of patriarchy by turning men into ridiculous sissies who would cry with them through girl flicks and then cook up a decent lasagna. Suddenly, women wanted to drive home their newfound equality by molding men to be more like them. This velvet revolution was reflected in a series of broader cultural changes. After decades of uncompromising movie heroes like Marlon Brando and Clint Eastwood, we were asked to fall for stuttering, floppy-haired fops like Hugh Grant, touchy-feely and hopelessly embarrassed around women. No doubt at the time, millions of misguided single women thought that having a man who could feel their pain was a good thing. Now, over a decade later, women are waking up to the fact that these men are trippy intimacy bores. The feminization of men hasn't produced the well-rounded uber males women were hoping for. Instead, women are now lumped with men whom they secretly despise but are too proud to admit it. Rather than partnership, professional women tend to seek dominance in a relationship. They map their lives out early on and pursue their dream of having it all with cold-blooded ruthlessness. Young women have a crystal clear agenda. They want the career, the wardrobe, the smartly furnished house, the 4x4, and the cute kids that they'll ferry in it to expensive schools. No man is going to get in their way, and the men they choose for themselves are pliant and feeble enough to facilitate that program. Concentrating so much energy on work and family matters requires these women to pick a man who is predictable and secure who won't upset the apple cart by pursuing dreams and instincts of his own. These are cardboard cut-out men who gush with empathy whenever their wives and girlfriends need to dump their professional stresses and female angst on them, weak and soulless men who have the guts to make a mark on themselves, who take the passenger seat in their women's juggernaut journey to post-feminist nirvana. But having ticked off the various items on their life checklist, women are left with a nagging sense of dissatisfaction. Where was the drama? Where was the passion? Where was the stimulation and growth? It was all forsaken for an anodyne, materialistic shopping spree that is a good thing, ultimately a poor substitute for a real life. These women consider themselves to be alpha females, but they are nothing but a pathetic sham. A true Amazon couldn't stand the company of a supplicant male, let alone marry one. Real alpha women are the ones who can more than hold their own with an alpha man. Deep down, women love men who stand up to them, who won't be pushed around. They love men who will look them in the eye and tell them to shut up when their hormonal bickering has become too much. They love men who will draw a line in the sand and walk out on them when they've had enough. They love men who know their own minds and are man enough to stick to their guns. It is unhealthy for a man to embroil himself in arguments with women. While men want an argument to make sense and have a rational conclusion, Women solely want the argument itself. It's a pressure valve for their emotions, and once they get started, there is no stopping them. I deal with these elements of the female personality in passive indifference. I only want to be with a powerful and capable woman. Men are now generally terrified of women, 
They hold their tongues for fear of being misinterpreted inappropriately. They constantly attempt to second-guess their partner in order to avoid giving offense. They preen themselves with groaning shelves full of beauty products so they won't incur derision and scorn. They suppress their masculinity and present themselves as cuddly mist in my skies and won't project self-confidence in case it's regarded as unreconstructed machismo. This backfiring feminist conspiracy has developed hand in hand with the march of raging political correctness in the West. The two have combined like some potent chemical reaction to explode in the faces of a generation of women who thought their molded man would make for a desirable one. In recent years, men have been trained like circus seals to be offensive to women. They no longer know how to entice them and turn them on. But women secretly long for a man with swagger, who is cocky and self-assured, and has a cheek to stand up them and make fun of their feminine foibles. They long for the rakish charm of a man who knows there's a whole ocean of fish out there, who isn't afraid of being himself in case he is rejected. The truth is a real man doesn't care what any woman thinks of him. He doesn't care what anyone thinks of him. He answers solely to his spirit. Real men don't pretend or even try to understand women. They simply love them for being the mysterious, capricious creatures that they are. And they don't take them too seriously either. They know the vicissitudes of the female mind, its constant insecurities and the fluctuations in mood. Rather than pander to them, they simply watch them drift by like so many clouds on the horizon. They don't get entangled in a woman's feelings and listen to her prattling on and on until she's taught herself out. Such strong and stoic men are exactly what women need to anchor themselves amid the chaos of their emotions. Men who put women on a pedestal can't make love to them in the way that women want. When women choose to be with new men, they are choosing a life that will be only half-lived. I think a lot of them are finally waking up to that fact. Relationships between independent and assertive people will always be fraught with tensions, but they have enormous creative energy. Bring back the real men, girls. You might just remember why you loved them in the first place. Anyway, that's all for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. It motivates me to create more content for you. See you next time. Cheers.